Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the sequential changes in circulatory function during development of volume loading hypertension. What are the sequence wise changes that occur in the circulatory function during development of volume loading hypertension? To understand this lecture you must watch the previous lecture which is about the volume loading hypertension. Volume loading hypertension is simply the increase in the arterial pressure or it is simply high blood pressure due to loading of excess extracellular fluid. When the amount of extracellular fluid increase in the body and that causes hypertension it is basically volume loading hypertension. To remind you again we discussed an experiment in which we caused or induced volume loading hypertension. We took a dog in this experiment. We took a dog in this experiment and at this point we reduced the, the his renal size or the renal function to 30% of normal. 70% of kidneys were removed so the renal functions were compromised then the dogs were given salt water or normal saline the water which contains salt and due to the decrease in renal size of about 70 percent only 30 percent was left and due to increase in the quantity of salt and water the mean arterial pressure started to increase with the number of days passing by then when the dog was given tap water here tap water which did not contain any salt the the arterial pressure from this point started decreases uh, decreasing again but still it was slightly above the normal level which was about 100 millimeter of mercury the mean arterial pressure decreased but still it was slightly above this normal level which is about 100 millimeter of mercury then again at this point when the dog was given 0.9 percent saline 0.9 percent saline here again the arterial pressure shoot again here due to loading of extra fluid in the body of dog that was an experiment but the same the the same data can be extrapolated on the uh, to the human bodies as well so here we just induced the volume loading the body of the dog was loaded with extra volume because the kidney size were removed so the volume the fluid could not be removed from the body of the dog and excess water was uh, like loaded into the body of the dog with the help of salt because of 0.9 percent saline so the mean arterial pressure increased now we are going to discuss what changes what changes will occur in the body when the arterial pressure is increasing or what sequences or what sequential changes occur during the increase of this mean arterial pressure now the first thing is that when the renal size when the renal size is reduced or the functions of the kidneys is reduced to around 30 percent it is reduced to around 30 percent and then the body of the uh, a mammal the dog or the any uh, any experimental any subject is uh, started uh, is being loaded with extra volume some some changes start to occurring in uh, occur in the body of that subject now at this day zero at this day zero the renal function is reduced by 70 percent and volume is being loaded by by increasing the intake of salt and water by increasing the intake of salt and water with the help of saline 0.9 percent saline but this time this time the experiment of giving 0.9 percent saline then tape water and then again 0.9 percent saline is not done rather 
rather 0.9% saline is being given here at this very point at this very point initially the kidneys were normal here at this point the uh, fluid is being loaded the fluid is being loaded at day zero this is basically the number of days these are 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 the number of days on the x-axis but on the y-axis we have different uh, different functions or uh, different parameters we will say like the extracellular fluid the blood volume the cardiac output the total peripheral resistance and uh, the uh, the arterial pressure so basically we want to see what will occur when the body of subject is being loaded with extra volume now here we have started loading the body of the subject with extra volume of water or saline but this time the this experiment is not being stopped with uh, for the tap water the the subject is being given extra water extra salt and that is around 4 to 5 percent of the normal intake of water and salt so the volume is being uh, increased the fluid volume is being increased initially at day zero the changes occurring in the body of the subject will be increase in the extracellular fluid volume the extracellular fluid volume will start increasing because the body is being loaded with extra fluid so the extracellular fluid volume will increase normally it is in uh, liters so it is uh, being shown here that in few days in in few days it will rise up to 33 percent of the normal in few days it will rise up around 33 percent from the normal level the extracellular fluid volume will increase which will also increase the blood volume of the subject the blood volume of the subject will also increase and the body is being continuously loaded with extra fluid so the extracellular fluid volume has increased the blood volume has increased blood volume is normally in liters normally it's around 5 liters and a 20 percent increase in blood volume has increased it to around 6 liters at the same time the cardiac output that is liters per minute also starts increasing so the heart is also pumping around 5 liters of blood 5 liters of blood per minute which also increases to around 40 percent from the normal level cardiac output also increases extracellular fluid has increased blood volume has increased cardiac output has increased but total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance which is measured in millimeter of mercury per liter per minute it initially started it initially starts decreasing it is not increasing other parameters are increasing but total peripheral resistance initially starts decreasing because when the volume is increased when the cardiac output has increased there is a there is a receptor known as baroreceptors baroreceptor now baroreceptors get activated at this point so they are the baroreceptors basically send signals to the brain we have discussed baroreceptors in detail in previous lectures and the function of the baroreceptors the function of the baroreceptors is to prevent rapid changes in the mean arterial pressure the function of baroreceptor is to prevent rapid changes in mean arterial pressure so when the cardiac output has increased in the acute in the acute stage or in the early few days the total peripheral resistance is decreased due to the baroreceptor because the baroreceptor is trying to uh, normalize the effect of this increase in extracellular fluid volume which is basically trying to increase the arterial pressure now here we see when the extracellular fluid volume and blood volume and cardiac output are increasing the arterial pressure which is our main subject that is like the role of kidney in long term regulation of arterial pressure so basically the arterial pressure is our main uh, topic for discussion 
and you see that with the increase in volume the arterial pressure has also started increasing but the increase in the arterial pressure is not as high as the increase in the extracellular fluid volume or increase in the cardiac output it's because the arterial pressure increase is being countered or is being controlled with the help of this decrease in the total peripheral resistance there is a decrease initially a 13% minus 13% decrease and it is due to the effect of baroreceptors which are basically present in the uh, carotid arteries and arch of the aorta and they are basically trying to decrease the arterial pressure when there is an increase in uh, arterial pressure and they try to increase the arterial pressure when there is a sudden decrease they are basically regulators they are uh, pressure regulators so there is initial decrease but after few days or a few weeks the extracellular fluid volume starts decreasing the blood volume also starts decreasing the cardiac output also starts decreasing and the total peripheral resistance starts increasing now the total peripheral resistance starts increasing because the effect of the baroreceptors as we have discussed is only in the acute stage and then they reset then they reset to the present stage if they fail to bring the arterial pressure back to normal if they fail to bring the arterial pressure back to normal then they reset at the new high level so when they reset the artery they cannot they can no longer control the total peripheral resistance which is basically a resistance to the blood flow so the per total peripheral resistance now starts increasing but even at this stage when the total peripheral resistance is at the normal level the arterial pressure has still increased from its normal level total peripheral resistance is at normal level but the arterial pressure has increased although we discussed that arterial pressure is basically the product of cardiac output into total peripheral resistance we discussed it we also calculated another uh, we also discussed another equation in the previous lecture that how we are going to calculate the mean arterial pressure so although cardiac uh, arterial pressure is dependent on cardiac output and total peripheral resistance here the effect is mainly due to the increase in cardiac output and the cardiac output increases due to the extracellular fluid volume and blood volume now slowly and gradually the extracellular fluid volume decreases the blood volume start decreasing the cardiac output starts decreasing but the peripheral the total peripheral resistance starts increasing and the arterial pressure also remain elevated it remain elevated now this increase in arterial pressure this increase in the arterial pressure here we are seeing it that initially it was due to the extracellular fluid but now it is due to the increase in the total peripheral resistance it is now due to this component it is now due to the increase in this total peripheral resistance how the extracellular fluid volume decreased how the cardiac output increased they decreased because of the uh, uh, phenomenon known as auto regulation auto regulation what occurs in auto regulation is that when the cardiac output increase so much the tissues the tissues they decrease their uh, blood flow to the normal the blood vessels to the tissues they basically constrict and they decrease their uh, blood flow which leads to constriction of the blood vessel and decrease in the uh, flow of blood and that leads to increase in total peripheral resistance because the blood vessel constrict so the cardiac output or the blood flow starts uh, normalizing the tissues then receive a normal level of blood flow at the cost of increase in total peripheral resistance another another factor for decrease in this cardiac output and extracellular fluid volume is the kidneys basically starts excreting kidneys the kidneys basically start increase in 
it's the kidneys basically excrete extra fluid or increase the urine formation now here comes the role of the kidney in long term regulation of arterial pressure which is our main topic and under this topic we have discussed uh, small uh, many small topics so this long term decrease in the extra cellular fluid volume and blood volume and cardiac output is due to the auto regulation which is basically regulation at the level of tissues because the tissues regulate their own blood flow and it is due to the increase excretion of extra volume with the help of kidneys with the help of increase formation of uh, urine now at this point when everything has normalized at this point they ha they have almost normalized because the volume is now from the 33% it is now just 4% the blood volume from 20% has decreased to around 5% the cardiac output from the 40% has decreased to around 5% only but the total peripheral resistance from the initial minus 13 minus 13% decrease has increased it has increased to 33% everything else has decreased everything else has decreased in the long term acutely all these things increased but total peripheral resistance decreased but in the long term in the long term the total peripheral resistance increased everything else decreased but the arterial pressure also increased it remained elevated it also it increased initially the initial increase in the arterial pressure the initial increase in the arterial pressure was due to the increase in the cardiac output was due to the increase in the cardiac output but even after normalization of the cardiac output the arterial pressure still remains elevated above its normal level and now this elevation of the arterial pressure even after normalization of cardiac output is due to the increase in the total peripheral resistance it is now due to increase in the total peripheral resistance so we can see here that when the kidneys are removed and the the body of the subject is being loaded with extra fluid extra volume the arterial pressure basically increases but the initial increase is due to the extra cellular fluid volume increase in the blood and a volume and cardiac output but after that the the increase is due to the basically due to the increase in total peripheral resistance everything else will normalize but the total peripheral resistance will not normalize because of the auto regulation process so here we can say that the total peripheral resistance increase in volume loading hypertension it normally increase in total peripheral hyper uh, hypertension because of the increase in these factors it only increase due to increase in these factors and then this increase in total peripheral resistance lead to increase persistent increase in the arterial pressure so these are basically the sequential changes these are the sequence wise changes that basically starts to occur when the body of a subject body of a dog or any human is being loaded it is being loaded after initially reducing the renal function to around 30% initially when the body is loaded with the extra volume the extra cellular fluid volume will increase blood volume will increase cardiac output will increase and arterial pressure will increase but the peripheral resistance will decrease then everything else will normalize due to auto regulation and increase function of the kidneys but the total peripheral resistance will remain elevated and this total peripheral resistance increase will basically cause increase in the arterial pressure so that's all about the sequential changes in circulatory function during development of volume loading hypertension thanks a lot for watching the video